Hey, what's up? Hope you're doing good out there. Hope Mercury Retrograde is treating you perfectly well. <laughs> um, thanks for coming back. My name is Henry Harrison. Uh, we're going to do a look at the astrology for this coming week. I think it's the week of like, uh, actually I have no idea. It's like the 3rd or something like that. We start on Sunday, so it's the 3rd through the 10th, right? Um, thanks for coming back, as always. I appreciate it. I do very much enjoy being able to make these videos. It um, encourages me to stay practicing the astrology, and um, you know, it gives me something to kind of ground it on, right? I know some of you understand that. So I appreciate your viewership. Um, so before we begin, I want to thank God, uh, who gives wisdom that we can look into these mysteries to the glory of His name. Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I hope you've been doing good. Um, Mercury Retrograde has been in my first house. Um, I'm a late degree Virgo rising chart, so Mercury is my like, first house ruler. So it's been in my first house, and I, I really enjoyed it. I, I was really, I was super sick um, like the, the weeks leading up to Mercury Retrograde. And it's like the day that Mercury actually started going backwards that I started feeling more like myself. <laughs> Take that for what you will. Um, it's kind of like... You know, I feel like I'm like the person of Mercury retrograde now. In some, like in certain situations, I've been like happening to other people. <laughs> if you get my drift, so um, for better or worse, um, you know, Mercury retrograde in general, we're um, we're going back over a lot of things that have come up, and I have the chart erected here for um, you know, it says Nashville right there, but the other chart, the houses are set for Washington D.C. So, um, you know, uh, the Mercury, he's in the ninth house. He's the eighth house ruler. So, you know, you're dealing with debts and uh, finances and stuff like that um, on, our, on our national level. Mercury is also the fifth house ruler. So, um, being in the ninth house, the fifth house ruler, being in the ninth house, um, hmm. Actually, I haven't considered that one yet. I don't know if I can say anything about that. But, you know, children, being like the like the children of um, this side of the U.S., somehow being uh, implicated in that. But, um, yeah, it was the main thing. Is that, you know, you've seen all the the uh, the, P, the talks, the U.N. talks, and now the, the Mercury's retrograde, they're having to deal with the debt ceiling thing. Maybe they've already dealt with that. I don't know. But um, it is interesting that that comes up right now. You know, I've been thinking about a lot of different things since Mercury turned retrograde. It really changed my thinking process as it can, you know. Um, I think you can have a much better Mercury retrograde experience if you just don't even um, attempt to um, be the lord of your own life <laughs> like most people do. Uh, and you just really let it, let it take you where it's going to take you day at a time, right? I think that's where people get really in trouble because they don't generally do that. <laughs> you know, and so you gotta break your phone and your car and your laptop to stop you. <laughs> we gotta we gotta break all your stuff to stop you um, from from getting yourself into worse trouble, right? So that's kind of like what people, what happens to people. So don't, you know, it's like don't um mm, don't go there, right? <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I want to do I want to do digression here, right? Before we really get into it, because I've been thinking about it a lot. Like I was, um, cause I th I'm a thinking type of person. I really think a lot, and I was like laying in bed, do a lot of my thinking in bed, and I was just thinking about like one of the one of the pressing questions, you know, is um, why are church people like that, <laughs> right? Like. Um, why are the people that are in the churches um, pretty much like anybody else or, you know, like any other religious people, right? And I was really wa wondering about that, and, like, it, it just clicked. I was like, oh, like, Christianity is just another one of the religions of this world, like any of the other ones. And it, like, it was like a cascade of insight from that because, like, it makes so much sense because what it means to be... A Christian in reality is you believe in Jesus 
you believe in the authority in the name of Jesus, and that's it. And then God teaches he God gives you His Holy Spirit. He teaches you all things by His Spirit, right? And um, that's not the case with most Christians in churches. Um, they have all these different denominations, right? Uh, and most of them don't believe in the Holy Spirit, for one thing. Um, and if they do teach that, and that'd be your more Pentecostal, non-denominational types, then they get on some other weird shit, you know? They do. But, you know, it just makes you think. It's like, well, if it's not about the truth, like, what is it, right? And it just, it's about what every other religion is about. It's about getting the money and getting the children and, um being pious and doing good works, right? Every religion is like that. And I would know because in my time of um, coming to know Jesus, to believe in Jesus, um, you know, I I went through all the different world religions. I experienced all of them. I was initiated into most of them, and I read all their books. Um, I really left college to do that, and that was really what I was what I had going on. Whether anybody could perceive that or not, I was studying the world religions and, and participating in them and trying to figure out which one was true, and none of them are true. <laughs> they don't have any truth in them because they are of the spirit of this world, and the spirit of this world is the devil, and there's no truth in him. So they're all they're all alike, you know, and it just it makes a lot of sense. Like I could tell you when I was um I was trying to become a Muslim, right? I was like, okay, maybe Islam is the right one, right? And maybe it is. You know, you don't know. You don't know. Right? How would you know? So you you don't know. So <laughs> it could be. So I read their book, I went to a mosque, and the <laughs> the funny thing was there were a few people there. And um, so, like, my, my line of questioning was, like, why is this the true religion, right? And the qu answers that I got were, you know, this is the best religion because we have the best women, we have the best food, we have the best, um, what else did they say? Like, what else do they have? Because they got the religion, they got the food, they got the buildings, they got, their best, they got the best book, right? You got... Um, you know, you can marry multiple women, you know, that's like a plus, right? You can divorce them, like, with a writ, you know? That's a that's a cool thing, right? Um, you can, uh, you know, like, their religious practices are very pious, you know, the five prayers and, and so on. I know I'm missing something. Oh, they got the, they got the nice clothes. I think I already mentioned that. Uh, they go on Hajj. They get their pil pilgrimage, right? And, you know, and they do, they do pious works, they do good works, and they get their, they get their money going, right? <laughs> but they, nobody cared to even, like, try to answer me, like, why is this the true God, or, like, what's your relationship with God? Because that's literally not important to them, and it's not important to Christians either. And if you point that out, they'll put you out of the church, they will. Or if you even, like, start to imply that, they will. So, I mean, they're all the same. Like, the Hindus, and I know the Vedic, they, they're, they're not, you're not all Hindus, right? I know you're, like, different Vedic traditions because I've studied that. But I'm going to call you Hindus anyway. The Hindus, Christians, the Satanists, the Luciferians, you know, they're all the same. Like, they're literally the same, right? Like, if you, you go to a Christian church, what do they do? You know, you, you sing the praise songs... You know, you you take your communion. I'm talking like a probably like a Baptist church at this point. You know, um, you meet other people. You know, you you pay your tithe and your charity so that you get the the the, be the spiritual or the economic benefit of that. And um, then you have chicken dinner, and then that's it. And then maybe they they read the Bible, but they don't get into the Bible because they can't. You see what I mean? They, they cannot get into the actual truth of the Bible. They can't. It's impossible for them because they're hypocrites. And God conceals it from them intentionally. So, you know, 
if you want to be a religious person, you know, the first thing that should be on your mind should be, you know, what, what food do you want to eat? You know, how do you want to dress? You know, who do you want to marry? You want to marry, like, a white person, or do you want to marry a black person? Or you want to, you know, like, if that's kind of, like, what you want. Or, you know, what kind of pilgrimages do you want to go on? You know, that's, um, <laughs> those are kind of your, your considerations, right? Or, you know, you can be, if you, um, the good thing about being a Satanist, right, is you get, you get, um, when you go to the chicken dinner after the, after the rituals, you know, they get vegan options, right? So, if, you, if that's important to you, you know, that's, that's something you should think about when becoming a religious person, right? So, just, just a little digression, you know, and you know, I know the astrology community is the same way, it's just one of the world religions, right? It's of this world, and they, they do not go further than that. Ooh, I feel like I struck a, I struck a, struck something there. <laughs> well, you know, you should know, you should know that that's the way it is. There's only salvation in Jesus Christ, that's um, the only way. And if you read the Bible, that's um, that's uh, what you'll find out. To the chagrin of the chagrin of um, religious Christian people who killed Jesus, by the way. Anyway, so we'll just go into the report now. Um, thanks for listening to all that. I hope I hope you got something out of that. Um, yep. So let's just take a look. So we already talked about up to Friday or Saturday, and yeah, we, we can't look at that. But I, I do want to leave the, the angles on the chart here. Or do I? No, I don't want to do that. Let's just, I just kind of wanted you to see that. See the Sun and the Mars are still in the 8th. Mercury's going to go back into the 8th and conjoin Mars there. See that? That'll be that'll be rough here in uh, in America. Cause I mean it'll be really coming to terms with the debt <laughs> and the you know in a not a very clean way it looks like. But you see, it's got all this trying to Jupiter too, like right on the angle. It's a set for Washington, so you know I think I think there's enough goodness in people to kind of get it done at least. Even if it's kind of um, badly, it looks really bad. You got Venus right there on the south node. I should turn off my... Um... No, I shouldn't. Never mind. Yep, okay. So, yep, that's that. When we're gonna... I'm gonna go to this chart now because I can actually use the calendar. But yeah, I hate you religious people. <laughs> well, no, I love you and Jesus, but I mean, you are all going to hell. I hope you know that, all of you. You Satanists and, and Christians, <laughs> you all you all go to hell. But actually, it'll be better for the Satanists because, I mean, they actually, you know, they're all like on the right page with what spirit they are about. And that's the thing, you know, like you go into these, these churches and they worship man, right? They worship a man. They pretend like they don't, but they worship their pastor. They worship whoever they bring in. Probably some rich dude <laughs> who probably, like, rents out buildings. You know, he's like a total user, right? And, you know, that's the spirit they want. They want the spirit of this world to work for them. And that's that's what nominal Christianity or lifestyle Christianity can do for you. It's also what being a Satanist can do for you. So, I mean, pick what you want. All right, so... Let's see. So starting on Sunday, the moon in Virgo goes through past the bendings, and Mercury makes that trine to Jupiter on the retrograde path. And, you know, they are pretty tight angles, right? So, I mean, they've been, like, Mercury really stationed, like, right on top of Jupiter there. Let me turn these points off. We don't need those points. Not now. So I mean, it, it feels like once the once the moon goes into there, I mean, it probably feels like 
Like, uh oh, like what's gonna happen? There's something going on. Kind of, kind of feeling like we can't quite get all the details done right. You know, so with the with the ruler of the sign being retrograde. Um, but you know, I think there's like a like a benefit. Like there's like a not a benefit, but like a a goodness to it. You know, or like the things that can be said, like they can be um, somewhat well aspected, right? Or in a sense of like, um, there's some goodness about it. Like, like if you if you like tell somebody off, right? It's like in a righteous way, <laughs> type type energy. So that'll be that'll be fun. I think I think that'll be nice um, to have have Mercury apply all day while um, he's um, in that sign. You know, you know, Jupiter and Mercury aren't really friends. But, you know, I think they can at least, like, agree about, about being tricky. Like, the trickiness. Jupiter can kind of, like, get on board with Mercury's trickiness here. And so, yeah, that's all day. All day there. No aspects of the moon. And then the morning of um, Monday, the moon is making a trine to Uranus, looks like making an opposition to Neptune and making a trine to Pluto. So the moon's like basically void of course all day, or not void of course, but not making an aspect. It's really applying to Venus um, visibly. So I mean, Monday, uh, probably like confusing. Like we want things to like go a certain detailed way, but like there's unexpected things that come out. Um, there are confusing situations or just like fogginess in the air as we try to um, do them in detail, right? Yep, yep. That's what happens on Monday. I mean, it's just like you know, you're doing, you're doing things in an organized detailed way but like there's like these things like these like situations or otherwise just kind of shadiness in the atmosphere kind of all coming in with these uh, only connecting to the outer planets right I still feel like some of y'all are mad at me for what I said. I don't care. I said what I said. <laughs> you know, I'd rather you knew the truth. And the truth is that Jesus Christ can save your soul. And nothing else can. You can't be free you can't be saved from the fear of death any other way. It's not even on the table. So funny man it's like they think the religious people think that they're talking to God or they're dealing with God no they're probably dealing with demons even like the ostensibly good religions like maybe like Ju Judaism Islam Christianity versus like the bad religions like Satanism or Luciferianism whichever one is more correct for you You know, but they're all of this world. It's just, it's just this world. They don't, they don't get a relationship with God in them because they, they legally cannot, they legally cannot do so because the only way you can legally deal with God is by being a pure being, and because you cannot be a pure being in this world, um, you cannot have a relationship with God. You can have a relationship with demons because demons rule this world. So I mean, people have these spiritual experiences, but you know, you're you're dealing with demons. Even even you nominal Christians out there, you're dealing with demons, not Jesus. Because if you really believed in Jesus, you would be taught all things by the Spirit of God. And I have driven that point home three times, so I hope you heard it. All right, so as so we get into the uh, moon's void, of course, off of that, 
So, I mean, on Tuesday morning, it's probably pretty nice with the moon connecting to Venus and then going into Venus's sign. You know, I think we have a sense of being more equitable at this time. The moon is applying the trine to Saturn, so, you know, there's a cold sort of vibe going on where we try to work things out. But the moon here is uh, such a low light. It's coming into a new moon, which is the, also this week. Um, but the moon, the funny thing is, is the moon isn't applying to Mars. It's applying to the sun, right, after the, after that trying to Saturn. So, you know, I think there's an opportunity to, um, I want to say, like, find some structure in your life. But it's more like, um, make, you know, make sure that, like, what you're doing or, like, what you're thinking is, like, reasonable, I guess as you go into this new moon. So let's see, what else? What else, what else? Yeah, that's it, I mean, the moon connects to the bending, so I mean, Tuesday overall is probably like doing what you have to do, but like not in like a really a hard way so much. And also just kind of like letting go, I mean, it's the new moon. So as we get into the Wednesday, Uh, Pluto, oh, Pluto, stations direct. You know, I kind of don't want to call them Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. I kind of want to call them, like, object A, B, and C. Because <laughs> you'll know what I mean when I say that. And I, I don't really I don't really have any connect, uh, attachment to those names. So if I start doing that, well, that's what, I'm, that's what I'm saying. Object A, B, and C in that order. Pluto would be object C, right? But I'm, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of just thinking about that. But anyway, like on Wednesday, you know, the full, like the new moon happens and then the moon immediately applies to Mars. So this is like setting the seed for a whole new round of um, conflicts and the nature of the conflicts that come, all sort of coming from here with the moon and the, the sun. Mars can see me happening right there. And the moon connects to or con conjoins Mercury there, right? And makes the trine to Jupiter. So, I mean, that's a lot. There's a lot going on right there. So, the moon having such a low light and then connecting to Mars and Mercury, I mean, the obvious delineation for that is that this next phase, this next month, will be, you know, full of verbal and emotional violence, hatred, strife, uh, enmities, um, just um, people hating each other like that's anything new. But, you know, it, it will, like, when we see, like, this next week come up and the moon makes the aspect to Mars and Mercury, who are very tight, you know, uh, it'll be, it'll be especially, I think, noticeable how cutting people are with their words and how uncharitable they are to each other and that's really all I have to say about the new moon it's not like a normal new moon like a Libra new moon I mean Mars is not supposed to be there it's been funny watching people like deal with the Mercury or the Mars and Libra thing you know most people don't have Mars and Libra So, I mean, just, like, having to deal with that extra passive-aggressive energy in the atmosphere, for most people, was pretty hard. But, you know, I, I've i learned a lot about being a Mars and Libra person from this. You know, I think, like, being more verbally aggressive <laughs> is a good thing. And, I you know, Mercury is in Libra with Mars, but, you know, Mars and Libra people, you know, you need to stand up. You need to be not more aggressive, but, like, you know, you, there's a certain way you got to fight and, like, that's that's just the way it is. You can't just be totally passive. I mean, you gotta like use that to like neutralize situations or or people or whatever. That'll really help you get that energy out. I think. At least that's my experience. We should leave Mars and Libra to professionals. So we should get Mars out of Libra. Leave it to professionals. All right. So the moon. 
The moon goes into... Uh, no, it doesn't. The moon is like... Where's that moon at? The uh, moon goes into Scorpio. The same day that the Venus goes into Sag, which is interesting. So I think when the moon, so Venus goes into Sag, like, it'll be really nice for, like, a moment. You know, like, we can, like, kind of finally, like, enjoy things in, like, a... In a way that's, like, um... You know, going somewhere. <laughs> um... Or just, like, extra enjoy... I think it'll just be more enjoyable. Like, there actually will be some fun going on. But the moon will be in Scorpio, making a square to Saturn, and, the, like, the whole day, so... You know kind of feeling like I don't know like the paranoid trapped feeling kind of kind of like is strong but I think we'll be going places with with like trying to trying to enjoy things and I think that'll be really nice I know we skipped over that square to Pluto you know I think that's interesting like this the, the conjunction to Pluto with the moon or the, the mercury and then the square to Pluto you know, you've been seeing, like, the paranoia about, like, the shortages and, the, like, the the UK especially. Like, they actually had the panic buying thing go on specifically. And, like, the, I don't know, just the paranoia. Like, they get very paranoid uh, new moon, I think. Um, and then even the next day will be fairly uh, of that nature on Thursday. So just, like, a few days of, like, not much going on, you know, the light is, like, pretty low still building, but not too much. All right, so then the sun, Mars, because he happens on Friday, exactly at midnight, which is funny. <laughs> or be where I am, at least, it's just right at midnight. Um, so, I mean, the Mars, you know, he's pretty much totally out of commission, you know, he's not doing anything, you know, the sun is a malefic planet, <laughs> so, you know, he's got, he's got the Mars pretty locked down there, Mars can't really do anything, but just kind of wait, so, but it's, it's, it's significant, because it's like a two-year cycle, right, it's like, this is, this is like the, the root of martial things, martial conflicts come out of this for the next couple of years, so, I mean, two more years of passive aggressive conflict and um uh emotional violence it looks like so i mean that'll be that'll be what that is mhm mm i don't know what else to say about mars cuz any other than the mars is is not not in commission yet and so the moon makes opposition to uranus and trying to neptune and that square to Jupiter, right? And we've done that before out of this Scorpio moon thing, so that's not anything new. Um, I think Jupiter's getting pretty tired of being an Aquarius, like, <laughs> you know. But Jupiter won't have to be an Aquarius that much longer, which is which is nice. But what is that like on Friday? Well, you know, I think we want to do something pretty different. Come on now. Get. Get on now. So the moon, you know, it makes an opposition to Uranus. Object A. And, um, the, uh, <laughs> the... You know, it makes that it makes that trying to Neptune and that square to Jupiter too, so you know, probably like thinking or like our emotions are like on one, like on a way that's like not good, kinda of blowing situations out of proportion. Um, in a way that's like not even real and just kinda of being like uh, kind of secretive and like kind of weird about it <laughs> like as we know as we all know but then an interesting thing happens when the moon goes into Sag to meet up with Venus who's on the south node and we have the Mercury Kazemi so that Mercury you know he's in that black stage of being um you know you know like Mercury he's like a he's like a chemical phoenix right he's like a he's like a sky bird 
it's like a celestial phoenix so you know when the mercury is whipping through you know his third stage you know before he gets into the retrograde you know that's that's like that that hot phoenix you know living it living it up right but you know when mercury retrogrades you know the phoenix burns away right he just blackens away but when we get to this um, Mercury Kazemi, you know, that's like the first stage of like the Phoenix, like turning into ashes, right? So like Mercury, he's like being burned to ashes. And then, you know, way, you know, out of those ashes, you know, will become a new Phoenix, right? Where, you know, we'll move forward with mercurial um, type things, which people usually say is like communicative communication and so on. Well, it's, it's a lot, it's that, but it's also like, uh, it's a lot of other stuff too, and that might just be me me being a Virgo and that like being like affecting my person very much so every time. But um, you know, it affects everyone in a certain way, right? It's um shenanigans coming at you <laughs> from from what what quarter it may be. You know, it's not merely communication. Like, Mercury is often responsible for how we can get things done every day and, like, how we can get things moving and, like, very, very swiftly moving things along. And we're at a different pace now with Mercury being in this condition. But anyway, the moon, the moon, the moon goes into Sagittarius. It meets up with Venus, who is not quite on the south node yet, but almost... So I think, like, whatever fun we were kind of having with Venus, you know, there's, like, a moment of that. But, like, Venus being so close to the south node, it's probably not, not even there. So, you know, probably, probably like, a nice... I, I, I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to a nice day on Saturday. I think, like, if you wanted to go outside, this would be a good day, like, to uh, be in nature or, like, to go on, like, a camping trip probably be okay except for the south node thing probably w it would be good and then later on in the day mercury mars um the mercury meets up with mars <laughs> right there too right off of the mercury kazemi i don't really know about that it's pretty funny like mercury just got this first round of purification right and um, he's he's met up with Mars, who's also been through this Kazemi process. So, got two planets right there who've both been Kazemi within like a couple of days. So I have no idea what that'll be like. I think that'll be a good a good day to be paying attention to what comes up. Because I mean, it looks like a magical kind of day. So in the air, it's very like teeming with it. So I mean, go outside on Saturday. That's um, it's a good day for that. And the moon makes that uh, connection to Saturn at the end of the day. And you see on Sunday we make all these other sextiles, right? So I think a lot of things kind of like click into place throughout throughout the weekend. You see that Saturn goes direct too, but that's for next week, all right? And what happens next week? I mean, you got you got that you got that Saturn. You got um you know, the sun trining Jupiter. You know, which is great because Jupiter will be direct after that, and that, that's really it. You know, Venus sextile Saturn. You know, we can kind of after the wait. When does Venus go through the south node? It says on Sunday. So after that, you know, Venus connects to Saturn. Probably find some like stability with like the way that we can find a find a new what, like a new level of enjoyment maybe at that time. So that's really it. I mean, it's an interesting week. I mean. Be definitely learn a lot if you pay attention, but you know, most people aren't paying attention. <laughs> you know, well, very few people actually care about the truth, which is like surprise. It's just surprising, isn't it? You know, I'm a Jupiter in Sag, right? And my Jupiter in Sag is Peregrine. He doesn't make any aspects. Does that mean take that with what you will? I think. I don't, I don't really know exactly what that means. I, mean, I think it means I get exiled a lot from religious places. Or I don't really have much of a connection to that religious side of things in a way. Even though I, I guess I do, because I've, I've considered it a lot. But, you know, in, enjoy it. Enjoy this week. I think it'll be, uh, it'll be very interesting. So... 
hope that was cool for you. I hope I hope you were not um, terribly offended. I mean, if you're still listening to this, you're probably not. You know, if you believe in Jesus, you are not offended whatsoever by what I said. Not at all. Not at all. Because Jesus is not a religion. It's the truth. But, you know, people don't care about the truth. So, anyway. I hope you will get the truth. Uh, God bless you. Um, be safe. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.